Good morning from Epcot. Currently standing inside the Rose and Crown over here in England. We're getting ready to uh, join the Royal Garden Tea Tour. The Royal Tea Tour is only available at 9.45 a.m. during the International Flower and Garden Festival. You can make reservations and I'll put a link down below for the Royal Tea Tour. It's approximately 45 minutes and it ends here in the Rose and Crown with tea and scone. They have a normal tea tour here over at uh, Twigs Tea and that's throughout the day. Now if it's not really busy you might get lucky and get a private tea tour which I have done but uh, that's a nice normal tea tour and that takes about 15-20 minutes. I'm curious to see how in-depth this tea tour is going to be. Okay, so welcome to the Royal Garden Tea Tour. Um, today we're going to be looking at 12 different blends of Twinings tea. Um, we're going to be walking around the garden and we're going to discuss how it's made, uh, the history of Twinings and also how each tea is best tasted. If you guys want to just um, follow me over to the tea garden, uh, if you want to sandwich yourself between myself and Natalie, that would be perfect. We're going to begin the tour any moment now. I like your ears. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very pretty. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? Good? Hey. Yeah, we're just, oh, there we go. Is that everyone, Natalie? Yeah. Perfect. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Epcot, to this year's Flower and Garden Festival, and of course, to our beautiful Twinings English Tea Garden. So today's tour is going to uh, give you all a chance to learn a little bit more about the history of tea uh, as well as what goes into making your everyday cup of tea. Mm -hmm. um, but before I get too carried away with that sort of thing, I thought it only polite to introduce myself to you all. So without further ado, my name is Brogan and as you may have guessed by my funny accent, I am indeed from Scotland. Uh, unfortunately, no, I do not come with subtitles. <laughs> so if you are struggling to understand me at any point, please feel free just to raise your hands and I'll be happy to repeat anything that you may have missed. Questions are 100% encouraged throughout this tour, okay? Um, I just would ask that you keep any requests for autographs until the very end. <laughs> now at the back there we have the lovely Natalie. Um, she is actually from England, so probably far more qualified to be doing this tour. Uh, but unfortunately you guys are sadly with me this morning. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm really joking. Uh, I am from a small town, just on the outskirts of Glasgow, uh, called Uddingston. Have any of you ever been to Scotland or Glasgow before? Oh, I see a hand at the back. You can have the VI, uh, VIP experience for this tour, if you so wish. <laughs> um, have any of you ever heard of Tunnocks before? No? Oh, yeah, I see one there, yeah. Uh, the biscuits? Yeah. Yeah, have you tried them? Yeah. Delicious, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they're actually made in my little town of Uddingston. So although we are fairly small, we're actually fairly famous as that's where it's based. Um, Tunnocks are a family business. Uh, they date back many generations now. And they actually make some of Scotland's as well as the UK's most recognisable biscuits. So that includes things like the Tunnocks caramel wafer and my personal favourite, the Tunnocks tea cake. Now for any of you that are curious to know what these biscuits taste like, I am delighted to inform you all that we actually now sell them inside our very own tea caddy. So I would definitely recommend picking up a box after this tour. If you ask me, they are the perfect accompaniment to a week up of tea. Now speaking of tea, uh, I'm now going to just tell you a little bit more about Twinings. So for those of you who don't know, Twinings have actually been going for over 300 years now and you can find their products in more than 115 different countries, which is a pretty impressive feat for a tea company. It was all started in 1706 by a Mr. Thomas Twining, who opened his very first coffee shop in the heart of London that year. I know what you're all thinking, a coffee shop, but uh, that is actually what it was called. Uh, and they did sell both coffee, tea, and actually gin there. Uh, in all honesty, it was a bit of a gentleman's club, so we won't talk about it too much. Uh, but essentially, all you need to kind of understand is that water was so contaminated back then that you couldn't just drink it on its own. You had to add something with it, and that was how tea sort of came about. It would be another 40 years after that date before you would begin to find Twinings products in the United States and obviously the business has only grown since then. Have any of you ever been to London before? 
Yeah, have you any of you ever been to the Twining store in London before? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a really remarkable place. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so it's actually situated on the Strand. So if you're ever in the city, that's like kind of in the heart of the city, it's quite a popular area. Um, I would recommend popping down and seeing it. It's a sort of um, really long and narrow store, and obviously it has been open since way back in 1706, which makes them the oldest taxpayers in the entirety of Westminster. Now, in there, you can actually try such wonderful concoctions as popcorn flavoured tea chocolate tea, candy floss tea, all these wonderful concoctions that I certainly wouldn't be brave enough to try but some of you might be. Um, they also have a loose leaf tea bar in there which is a pretty cool thing. Now do all of you drink tea? Does anyone not drink tea? Oh that's great, we won't have to kick anyone off the tour today Natalie, that saves you a job. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I have to confess, I wasn't much of a tea drinker before I came here, I, uh, so you know, it did make me having to come to the United States to drink tea, which is sort of odd, but you know, I, I will be honest. Um, now what kind of teas do you guys like to drink? Feel free to just shout out flavours. Earl Grey? English breakfast. English breakfast. Oolong. Oolong. Yeah. Any herb tea drinkers? Green tea drinkers, caramel, yeah. Mint. Oh, I love mint. I'll get into that in the tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so obviously there's quite a variety. So it might interest you to know that Twinings have actually 400 blends in their repertoire. Uh, but that is globally speaking, okay? And what I mean by globally is that a lot of the teas, for example, that we stock inside of our tea caddy, we can't actually purchase at home in the UK. They're United States ex exclusives. And that's the same as in the UK, some teas that we have there, you guys can't purchase here. And that goes for the same as France, um, Africa, all over the world, okay? Now, we've only got 12 teas featured in today's tour, but simply because our, our garden isn't big enough to accommodate over 400. And I'm sure you've all got fast passes for sewn in and frozen ever after to get to, so we won't keep you for too long. Now, do any of you know which plant it is that tea originates from? No? <laughs> it's not the tea plant, well it technically is, but that's not its, it's given name. Um, that's okay, don't worry, it's fortunately my job to tell you whether you know the answer or not. Um, and that is actually the Camellia sinensis plant. And lucky for you guys, she has decided to join us on today's tour. She's hiding just behind me. Um, she is this sort of green leafed uh, plant in between the pink flowers there. She's also behind this side, and she will also be planted in various the garden. Now she is your base for your true teas, which would be your black teas, your green teas, your white teas and your oolong teas. I'm sorry I have just noticed a duck has decided to join this tour. I'm pretty sure he did not pay $18. So um, Natalie please for some He's got no badge. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah, so that's your base for your true teas. Your black teas, your green teas, your white teas and your oolong teas. Camellia sinensis, it's a bit of a mouthful. <coughs> Now, that's a fact that can often surprise people. Um, as I, I don't know about you guys, but I didn't expect that so many different kinds of teas would all originate from the same plant. Um, but if you think about it in the way that most wines originate from grapes, depending on what kind of grapes you use and how long you uh, ferment them for, is going to dictate the final product. So how much you can get like white wines, rosy wines, red wines, that's the same way that depending on how you process the Camellia sinensis leaves, that's going to... Um, it's going to depend on how your tea turns out and I will go into that in further detail as the tour goes on. Now Camellia sinensis, she is an evergreen plant normally adorned with small white flowers. Uh, she can grow to be about 50 years in age and um, these ones are just little babies which is why they don't have the flowers on them yet. They're only about a year old. She can also grow to be as tall as this building just behind me, okay? which is pretty crazy. Now she's primarily grown on huge tea plantations across the world in places like Africa and India and China. They just have the perfect climate for the tea to grow. I do believe though it is now being grown in various places in the States as well as in the US. But in terms of twinings, uh, sorry, as well as in the UK, but in terms of twinings, they only generally um, get their tea leaves from those plantations that are on the other, that belt of the world. Now, um, the reason that she's uh, this small and for our garden is because she's generally kept to be about waist height because we don't want anyone to have any jack in the beanstalk moments when they're uh, producing this plant. Now, in terms of twining's tea leaves, they only ever use the top two leaves and the buds of the Camellia sinensis plant. And the reason for that is just quality control. If you imagine that the taller this plant becomes, the darker the leaves get at the bottom and they start to turn more bitter tasting. That is bitter, not better. I have trouble distinguishing those words with my accent. Now, other tea companies, I'm not going to specify who, but essentially they will just use like a giant scissor. So whatever they um, capture within that scissor, they will use to make their tea. Whereas twinings are very specific about only using the top two leaves and the bud. The bud is generally only used for your white teas, okay? Now, if twinings do ever use any other part of the plant, 
It's only really in teas like Lapsong Sushan, which is a very smoky tea, and that is when they will need to use the darker leaves at the bottom, but that's only in very specific occasions. Okay? Now we are going to, um, does anyone have any more questions about Camellia sinensis before I move on? You will hear me talk about her a lot in this tour, she's incredibly popular. Um, I'm just going to move over here if you guys want to sort of come around a little bit further. Oh, hello that. <laughs> I know, I'm like a bit cautious though that I don't want to. Okay, do you guys all drink iced tea? Yeah? Now that's a fact that doesn't surprise me at all. Um, I have learned since being in the United States that iced tea is incredibly popular here. Uh, it's not so popular where I'm from. I'm sure you can imagine why. Uh, essentially we're cold enough as it is, we don't really need to make our tea cold too. Uh, I do have a housemate that's from the south that drinks copious amounts of iced tea. I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. Um, it may interest you to know that actually studies show that 80% um, of the tea drank in the US is actually over ice. So that is how you guys generally prefer your tea. Now these two that we've got for you, the first two teas of the tour, are our Twining's cold brew teas. Now, the reason they're called cold brews is because you actually brew them in cold water. So they're incredibly easy to make. Essentially what Twinings have done is, they've um, created a tea, a nice tea, that you can drink on the go. So you can, if you've got a water bottle or one of those portable coffee cups, all you would need to do is have one of these tea bags. You could even use a water fountain and you'd have perfectly brewed iced tea in just a matter of five minutes. Obviously at home you have the luxury of adding ice in there as well to make it that extra bit uh, refreshing and cold. Now the first one that we've got is our green tea with mint. Now, I have to confess this is my favourite tea of the entire tour and um, I do love it a lot. It is caffeinated so it does originate from the Camellia sinensis plant uh, but it is a lighter tea being a green tea. It has been partnered uh, with peppermint leaves and other natural mint flavourings which makes it incredibly palate cleansing and really refreshing. Another girl that does this tour she sort of describes it as being a bit like liquid chewing gum in a cup. Um, so if you do like that, the kind of taste of mint, um, you will enjoy this tea. I have to confess, uh, who was the lady that said she liked mint at the start? Oh, I'm not sure who it was. Oh, it was yourself, yeah. Uh -huh. um, I could eat mint ice cream, mint cake, mint chocolate every day, all day and not get bored. So if you do like mint, like, like me, you will love this tea. It's delicious. Now, just on my other side, we have our peach tea, which is a bit more of a traditional form of iced tea. Um, obviously, just without the arduous process that making traditional iced tea at home can be. Um, now this one is a black tea base, so it is heavier to begin with, but it's been partnered with natural peach juices in there to add the sweetness to the tea. Now it is important to note that all of our teas on this tour, and as well as all the teas inside of our tea caddy, they are unsweetened, um, but we do have a saying at Twinings, which is that it's your tea, so you can drink it any way in which you like. So if you want to add in honey or sugar or milk, no one's going to judge you, at least not that much. <laughs> now this tea is actually Stephen Twining's tea of choice. Have any of you ever met Stephen before? Mm -hmm. Oh yes, have you? Yeah, when did you meet Stephen? Oh, it was about a year or two about ago. About a year ago, yeah. yeah. He's, he's wonderful. Oh, he's, well, he's hilarious. Yes. He tells a good joke. Yes. Um, so Stephen is a 10th generation Twining. So Twining is the family name, Twinings is the company. Uh, and he still works very closely within the company. He normally visit us, uh, visits us here in the UK Pavilion about twice a year. Uh, normally at the start of this festival, which he did um, a few months ago now. And as well as, uh, as at Food and Wine. So if you're at Food and Wine Festival later this year, please do pop by and see him. He loves to sign a tea box, take photographs, tell jokes, he's great. Uh, now when he was here just a few months ago, he actually drank uh, eight cups of this tea in six hours, just specifically this tea. Um, and did you have a chance to work with him no, that day? Absolutely no, and um, there are a few other people um, who work inside the tea caddy that were partnered with him for that day, and they did make him this tea. So they have, he has a very specific way in which he likes it with a very specific amount of ice cubes. So um, if you see Ben or, or Owen in the tea caddy later today, please do feel free to stop them, and they will tell you how to make tea in a way that a twining likes to drink it. Um, but yeah, uh, this is a very refreshing blend again, uh, very sweet, especially good for having on a hot day. And you know that if a twining enjoys the tea that much, that you guys are going to like it too. That's my personal favorite that you guys have. Yeah, you like yeah. it as well, oh, yeah. Wonderful. It's really good. We have a variety of other flavors as well inside the tea caddy. We've got a citrus, a mixed berry, and an English classic. Um, I feel like I'm missing one. Am I missing one? No, that's all of them. Yeah, we've got the five. So if neither of these really appeal to you, but you do like your iced tea, I would certainly try at least picking up one of the boxes. And later on in today, when we're doing our tours in the afternoon, there will be some samples of some of the cold brews inside. So please feel free to pop back then and try them because they are delicious. Now we're going to just move on to our black teas if you want to follow, Na uh, follow Natalie around. Now another good tip for these teas, if you're making them at home, is to always make a little bit of extra mixture. Pour that into your ice cube tray, and that way when you're adding ice to your drink, it's not going to dilute the flavour with water, it's only going to add to it, okay? <laughs> 
voice but I'm not sure how loud. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys still hear me at the back there okay? Perfect. Alright. Now are we all fans of black teas here? Mm -hmm. No. No? I have to confess I am not. <laughs> so I'm going to just say that right out there. I am not a black tea drinker. It's too strong for me. But I do appreciate that for a lot of people when you think of tea that is the first kind of tea that sort of springs to mind. Have you all heard of English breakfast before? Yes. Yeah. So English breakfast is the most popular tea in the United Kingdom. If you pop into a restaurant or a pub or a cafe and you order a cuppa or a brew, uh, chances are it's going to be an English breakfast that's served to you unless you specify otherwise. Now traditionally, at least in my family, we drink our English breakfast, or I don't because I can't stand it, but my mother, who is not a functioning human without her English breakfast tea, um, does drink hers with milk and sugar. Um, do you guys like to add anything to your English breakfast? Yeah. Yeah, does anyone just drink it straight? Oh, I commend you. Bravo. <laughs> you are a braver soul than I. Um, now, the black teas, like an English breakfast, they are obviously quite classically bitter, quite strong in taste. Um, they're obviously, as I said, not for everyone. Now, the reason that they are so strong in comparison to something like a green tea, now that you've learned that they all originate from the same plant, is because the Camellia sinensis leaves have been allowed to fully uh, oxidise. Another way of thinking about that is fermentation. So they've been allowed to fully ferment. Now there is a four step process for those Camellia sinensis leaves in order to make a black tea, which is that they're withered, rolled, oxidised and dry, uh, dried. We do have some signs just down uh, to the side of me there that will give you a more in-depth detail of that process if you want to look at it later. But the easiest way that I can sort of describe it for you is that if you imagine a fresh apple, you know when you cut it in half and you let the air get to it, that it turns that sort of brown way? That's the exact same thing that happens to your leaves. They're left out in the air so that they can turn as dark as possible. And that's what makes your, your black tea so rich. All right. Now the first black tea that we've got for you is our English breakfast with lemon. So it's a bit of a twist on the classic. Now English breakfast itself has only actually been around since 1933. So it's actually a bit more of a modern tea than you might expect if you think about the fact that that very first store has been opened since 1706. Now this thing with lemon was actually only released just before Christmas time. And essentially what Twinings wanted to do was to make a tea or a, an English breakfast that appeals to more millennial audiences who are looking for their teas to be a little bit sweeter. Um, now although I don't generally like black teas, as I've said, uh, this one I don't mind so much and I actually wouldn't recommend adding anything to it when you do drink it because you do get that very distinguishing sort of fruity lemon flavour in there and you will smell that beautiful lemon aroma from the minute that you brew it. I would say that if you're like me and you're not really a fan of black teas or maybe you've been too cautious to try an English breakfast before in case it was too strong, this would be a perfect one for you to start out on, okay? Now we're going to move just a little bit further upwards to our Earl Grey. Now I did hear some people say that they liked Earl Grey earlier. Just raise your hands for me again if you're a fan of Earl Grey. Oh, I see quite a few. Can everyone still hear me okay? Yeah? Everyone still with us? Excellent. Now Earl Grey is actually Twining's most uh, successful tea globally. It is the most popular. Um, but probably the most interesting thing about this tea is its origin story. Now it is believed that in the 1830s, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom at the time had an envoy returned from China with this recipe and he liked it so much that he asked Richard Twining, who was his tea merchant at the time, to recreate the blend for him and that's how this tea came about. Um, it is called Earl Grey because his name was Charles II Earl Grey. Now, Twining's never patented that tea, which is why you find other tea companies that make it to this day, but they did actually create the original blend. Now, when you pick up a box of our Twining's Earl Grey tea, you will see that there's always an autograph on the side. Now, that is the most recent member of the Grey family signing that box to ensure that the tea still tastes as good today as it did back then, which is a really cool thing. Now, does anyone not like uh, Earl Grey tea? No? Oh, I see a hand at that. Not for you, sir. No. Okay. Now, it does have quite a, a sort of distinguished taste to it, and that is why it's not for everyone. Um, that comes from bergamot fruit, which is basically the key ingredient to this tea. Now, bergamot is a small Mediterranean pear-shaped fruit. Um, it's 
People describe the taste as being a cross between like a lemon, a lime and a grapefruit. It's very citrusy. You can't actually eat one, so please don't ever try. They are inedible. And where we get the flavour from is actually it's rind. It's got a very oily skin, um, which is why it's often used in things like perfumes and candles and cosmetics. Uh, once again, much like the lemon tea we just talked about, you will smell that kind of citrusy aroma when you brew this tea. Um, I would say that this is another great one for you um, if you do like your black teas and you haven't tried Earl Grey before after today's tour I would recommend trying it because it is a complete classic. We have got its sister tea just a little bit further down this tour um, who is lighter so we will be looking at her very shortly but for now we're just going to move on to the promenade and this is a variation on the classic Earl Grey. Now this is our Earl Grey with lavender. Have any of you ever heard of it before? Oh yes. I love it. Did you like it? Yeah, Absolutely what do you like love about it. it. The lavender really brings it all together. Brings it, yeah. It's a very beautiful partnership you get with this tea. Now if we could, when we're on this promenade, just stay as closely together as possible. This is when everyone is running to get to Frozen after, ever after and to meet Anna and Elsa. So, see what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That proves my point entirely. <laughs> But yes, this Earl Grey with Lavender, once again, she's a fairly new uh, blend. She's not been around for all that long at all. And um, like this gentleman was saying here, it's a very beautiful partnership that you get with this tea. The lavender really helps to pick out those notes of bergamot. It's quite a floral effect that it has in the tea. It is a little bit lighter, um, but you are definitely going to get that distinguishing both smell and taste of lavender in there. So if you've ever had like um, lavender cakes, for example, it is a very similar sort of flavor. Now, do you guys like lavender as a scent? Yeah, I love it. It's one of my favorites. Um, it has obviously been known to have very relaxing properties. I know my grandmother likes to put it under her pillows at night time to help her sleep. Um, so I would say that this is a black tea. If you like to drink black teas throughout the day, this one would be a good one to either have early in the morning or just before you go to bed at night time. It is very soothing. There is a guy on, um, that does this tour that says he likes to have it in the morning because it really helps him get ready for the day, but in a way that's not too overpowering like something like an English breakfast would be. Now the most interesting thing about this tea uh, is that it doesn't actually contain lavender flowers within the tea uh, leaves itself. So you may be wondering how it's made. Well, essentially, if you imagine um, when your Camellia sinensis leaves are laid out to oxidize, they're laid out on a tray. Just above them is placed a, a tray of lavender flowers. And then the process goes on and on. So there's trays just stacked on top with that same uh, Camellia sinensis lavender, Camellia sinensis lavender. They're left for about 12 hours. And those tea leaves just naturally take on that lavender aroma. That's how it's made. So they're not actually blended. The flowers aren't actually blended in there with the recipe itself. Now, tea leaves are very good at taking on aromas and we will look at that in more depth later as we go on this tour. I don't know if any of you have ever cooked with tea before, um, but I actually had a guest recommend to me that they use uh, this tea to make lavender ice cream. Now, I am not much of a chef, so I cannot give you the specific recipe, um, but essentially she said that um, she had an ice cream machine and all she does is she just cuts open her tea bags and adds the contents into her base of chocolate or vanilla or whatever it is that she's making. So if you are a keen chef, I would certainly recommend giving that a go once you get home. Now we are just going to move on to our last black tea of the tour, which is just further down the promenade. Hiding in the corner, I'm just going to squeeze past you guys. Sorry. <laughs> now have you all had Lady Grey tea before? Has anyone not heard of Lady Grey? No? Everyone's heard of it? Okay, so Lady Grey, if you guys just want to come a little bit closer for me just so I can see all your lovely faces, thank you. Now, Lady Grey is actually um, a really new tea in terms of uh, tea speak. Um, she's actually only been around since the early 1990s. Now, do you remember at the start of this tour when we were talking about um, different teas being created depending on where you are in the world? Well, she was actually originally created for the Norwegian market who found that Earl Grey was too strong for them. They didn't like it. So Twinings wanted to remedy that by offering a lighter alternative. So she is pretty much the lightest of the black tea family. She has that same bergamot base, however it's been reduced and she's been partnered with additional um, lemon and orange in there. So they really once again help to pick out those um, sort of citrusy notes of the bergamot and make it a really fruity tea to drink. Um, for that reason she has traditionally, generally speaking, drank cold and that is how we serve her in the Rose and Crown just across the road. We serve her over ice. So if you do like iced tea, and once again today if it's very warm, like I'm, I'm sure it will be, I would recommend picking up a glass of this at some point. Now if you wanted to make this cold at home, unlike our cold brews that we looked at the start, you would have to still make this like a hot tea. and um, You would want to um, brew it, allow it to cool to room temperature and then add your ice. 
If you don't allow it to cool um, and you just throw the ice in right away, that can sort of make the tea turn quite foggy and it can really affect the taste. So you want to make sure that you let it cool to room temperature. That's the most important thing. Now this tea is trademarked to Lady Grey, so if you have never heard of her before, that might be why. You won't find any other tea company that makes it. Now speaking of trademarks, have any of you ever noticed the little crown that's on this Twinings logo? Do any of you know what it means? Yeah, so it is, yeah, Royal Family. So essentially it's called the Royal Warren. So if you ever see any project with that little crown on it, it means that it's a project that's used within the Royal Family. So it might bring you some comfort to know that you're actually drinking the same tea as the Queen. <laughs> and if you ever do pot red house for a cuppa, it will be twinings that she serves to you. Now, um, I do know that other products such as like Hellman's mayonnaise have it, for example, but also things like perfumes and cosmetics. So like inside of our Queen's store just there, we sell Penhaligans. They all have that logo because they're the perfumes that the Royal Family use. All right, and you can ask Carlos, who will tell you an in-depth story of which one specifically. I know, like Princess Diana, she used to wear Bluebell. Kate wears Impressa, and I can't remember which Prince Harry wears. Can you remember? Nice. I think it's Halfetti, but don't quote me on that. And um, now that Royal Warrant is renewed every five years. Twinings have not lost theirs since the 1800s, so they've never lost their warrant. So once again, that kind of shows you what kind of quality tea it is that you're drinking. All right. Now we are just going to move just around this corner towards our herbal teas if you want to follow Natalie around she's doing an absolutely excellent job <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh efficiency <laughs> sorry my lovely I'm just gonna squeeze past you and stand right here all right are you guys fans of herbal teas yeah. yeah if you can feel free to move around a little bit further for me I'm gonna just I'm gonna be talking right over here if you guys want to that way everyone can still hear me. I do know I have a loud voice, but they had to take the microphone off me because they could hear me in China, so. <laughs> All right, so yes, herbal teas. These are actually my favorite teas, I have to confess. Um, any of you that are fans of herbal teas, you may have noticed that at the start of this tour, I didn't mention them when I was talking about which teas originate from the Camellia sinensis plant. Does anyone know why that is? Because there's no tea in them. Ta da! <laughs> so, in actual fact, herbal teas are not teas at all. Um, if you have any trouble understanding that, please do take your complaints to Twinings. I don't know why they still consider them teas either, but that's. Yeah. No, I'm only joking. The reason that we still largely call them teas is just because they're brewed in the same way that your true teas are. So, your black teas, your green teas, and so on and so forth. And because they still come in that familiar tea shaped bag. Herbal teas instead, they are just an infusion of plants, flowers, herbs spices and fruits. Um, one thing that they are some things that they do have in common with your true teas however though is that they are all known to be rich in antioxidants, provide many health benefits and of course they're universally enjoyed. Now our first herbal tea that we've got for you is the holiday berry however you can actually find this year round under the name of berry fusion we do stop them inside with the exact same tea yeah. just one was given a, a bit of a jazzier name for Christmas time. Now this is our lovely Natalie's favourite tea. This is the part of the tour where she normally starts to tear up when she's talking about it. She gets so emotional and she loves it that much. <laughs> I do, I really enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> now it is, um, do you guys like sort of berry punch like flavours? That is basically essentially the body of this tea. Now you're going to find strawberry in there, uh, acai, apple pieces, blackberry leaves, orange leaves, um, a real fruity medley. Um, I, a lot of people could call this the sangria of teas, um, however obviously it doesn't actually contain any alcohol. But remember what we talked about at the start of this tea uh, tour, it's your tea, you can drink it any way in which you like. So if you want to throw an adult beverage or two in there, be my guest. And um, This is another one that's really delicious to have over ice, that is how I like to drink it. And we have another girl that likes to throw honey in there, but I actually also, and much like a sangria, it's really good mixed with fresh fruit. Um, however, um, if you like your teas warm, this is another good alternative for you as like a, a kind of alcohol-free cider at Christmas time. If you have this hot and throw a cinnamon stick in there, you're going to get all of those sort of warming feelings. Now just across from me, we have another one of my favourite teas, which is the pure peppermint. Remember what I said at the start of this year, I am a big mint person, so I'm slightly biased towards this tea. 
Now there isn't really much I can tell you about this tea in terms of its contents that isn't in the name. Uh, it is just peppermint leaves and, natural, uh, and other natural mint flavourings. So if any of you do grow peppermint at, at home, you can actually just make this tea using that plant. Um, you would just process the leaves and steam them in the same way that you would for any sort of tea and throw your hot water in there. It's incredibly easy to do at home. Although do Google for a full recipe because once again, I'm not much of a chef, so I would not take uh, my word for it. Um, but in terms of herbal tea, considering that they aren't caffeinated this is going to be one of the strongest and most distinguishing flavors that you find obviously we know mint to be quite strong and um, so if you do look for that extra kick in your tea I would recommend trying this one now have any of you ever gone to a restaurant and at the end of your meal they've handed you like a mint now there are two reasons for this the first is like we said at the start for the green tea is that um, mint is very palate cleansing so it's going to get rid of any like odors that are left in your mouth now the second reason is that mint is very good for indigestion so if you are hitting our walt disney world buffets particularly hard throughout your stay here a cup of our pure peppermint tea might be exactly what you need to get you back up and running again <laughs> all right now um, i actually also had a guest recommend to me that she uses this tea to make cookies at christmas time so that's another really great way that you can cook with tea all right now we're just going to move further up the promenade a little bit now have any of you heard of rooibos tea or red teas before Anyone a big fan of rooibos teas? Feel free to just keep going a little bit further. I'm going to be moving that way anyway. Thank you, my lovely. Now, rooibos. Can everyone still hear me at the back? Yeah? We'll, uh, we'll, we'll wait a little bit for me to so come down just a little bit further, just so everyone can hear. Thank you, guys. How are we now? Good, yeah, perfect. So rooibos um, is a plant that has actually been proven to only grow one place in the world. And that is at the base of the Cedarburg Mountains in South Africa. They have tried to grow it in various other places and it simply will, it just will not grow. There's something about the environment there that's just perfect for this plant. Now, uh, rooibos, the reason that it's also known as a red tea is because when you process these leaves, um, they take on a beautiful mahogany shade. And once again, when you brew that tea, they are going to be a beautiful shade of red, um, which is a lot like this holiday berry tea here. Now, Rooibos in itself it has been known to have a sort of vanilla-like flavour to it um, and for that reason, once again, it's quite warming. Uh, Twinings have obviously partnered this one with orange and cinnamon uh, and for me, I would say that this is a perfect tea to drink in sort of like fall time or um, autumn as we would call it uh, and it's a perfect alternative for those of you that can't drink caffeine and when all of their pumpkin lattes and your chais are really in fashion at that time of year, you could be still be having something that's going to have that same um, sort of Christmassy, warming sort of tones to it. Um, if you do like cinnamon, you are going to definitely taste that. So if you don't like cinnamon, don't try this tea. It won't be one for you. Now, although generally speaking, I like my herbal teas cold and over ice, this is one that I would recommend having hot. In South Africa, rooibos teas are tradi uh, traditionally drank warm. They're sort of the national tea in much the same way that English breakfasts are for us in the UK. Uh, and they do generally add milk to their tea. Um, usually almond milk, but you could throw um, regular milk or uh, cream in there as well. It's going to still have that um, same effect. Now, our last herbal tea is just to the side of me here, and this is our chamomile, honey and vanilla. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I think of herbal teas, chamomile is one of the first flavours that springs to mind. Uh, I have to be honest, a lot of people have a love-hate relationship with chamomile. Some people say it tastes like grass. <laughs> Other people like the fact that it's so palatable. Um, now, chamomile in itself, once again, and much like lavender, has been known to have quite calming properties to it. Um, a lot of people have it um, that struggle to go to sleep, so they'll have a cup of chamomile tea before bedtime. Have any of you heard of Beatrix Potter, the tales of Peter Rabbit? Well, when Peter's uh, going on all of his adventures, his mother likes to give him some chamomile to help calm him down after a long day of chasing Mr. McGregor around his farm. So uh, that is essentially the effect that this tea will have on you. Um, at the minute, we actually have both this one and the orange and cinnamon spice. They're uh, packaged in beautiful Beauty and the Beast boxes from when the live action came out. Um, so if you do like Beauty and the Beast, I would recommend picking up those teas for that reason alone. Um, now this, again, the chamomile tea has been partnered with honey and vanilla, which really helps to add a sweetness to this tea. Um, so if you don't like chamomile, that might help to kind of alleviate the kind of plainness that you're going to get with a chamomile uh, taste. It's also incredibly soothing. So I had a guest who was on this tour. She said, 
when she's not feeling particularly well, this is the sort of tea that she likes to drink. It is very comforting. Um, I like to say that it's the tea that I have after I've had a long, hard day at work and I just want to lie down on the sofa, wrap myself in a blanket and not get up for a few hours. So if, like me, you want something relaxing, this would definitely be one to try. Now we are just going to move further down to our last two tiers of the tour. If you just want to kind of all follow down and stand where we did at the very beginning, that would be perfect. here yeah what do you guys like about green teas feel free to just <laughs> they're, no they're good for you yeah yeah they're a lower level of caffeine in them uh, they're lighter does anyone not like green teas anyone really not like them normally with this is a part of the tour where someone is incredibly passionate about how much they don't think Natalie doesn't yeah Natalie why don't you like green tea <laughs> tastes like grass there we go um, yeah no green teas are not for everyone uh, it may interest you to know that they actually originated in China uh, to begin with they were just solely used for medicinal purposes but they have come a long way since then uh, I think they were pretty much arguably a bit more of a millennial tea they've certainly grown in fashion in recent years now the reason that uh, green teas are lighter than your black teas um, it's because the Camellia sinensis leaves, they've not been oxidised for the same amount of time, or actually they've not been oxidised at all. What has happened instead is that they're just steamed so that the leaves aren't allowed to darken. They still stay that green colour, um, which is why when you brew a green tea, it is kind of beautifully golden, sort of crisp looking. And that is why they're, they're not, they don't contain as much caffeine either. Now, for any of you that don't like green teas, I have to again say that they weren't really my cup of tea uh, before I came here. Um, it, it might be because you're over brewing them. Now out of all the teas that we've looked at in this tour, green teas are incredibly, incredibly easy to over brew. If you over brew them, they can turn very bitter very quickly and they can also take on like a fish like aroma. I don't know how specifically, that is just the marvel of tea. Um, but we do put on all Twine's tea bags a recommended sleeping time. For a green tea, it should really be no more than two to three minutes. Part of that is temperature. Green tea uses a lower temperature than black tea would use. Yeah, it's, it's arguable with that one. Some people um, will say that you can burn the tea leaves, but actually, so long as you're only steeping them for that, that right. very specific time, then, then you should be okay. The temperature shouldn't really come into it too much. But I would just say that, yeah, if any of you have tried green teas before and thought this isn't for me, um, it may just be that you've just over brewed them for too long. I know I was guilty of that since I found out that you only brew them for that very specific amount of time. It has changed my life. I am now a green tea drinker. As I said at the start, the green tea, well, it's, it's a cold brew to be fair, but uh, with that green tea at the start, it is one of my favorites. Now this green tea pomegranate raspberry and strawberry um, is a lot like the holiday berry that we look like and that you're going to get those very distinctive berry um, punch like flavors in there but obviously the biggest difference is that it is caffeinated uh, this is another one that is really good to have over ice i would say it's perfect for a hot day uh, just across from me we have the green tea with jasmine now this one you're going to get that beautiful jasmine aroma from the minute you open the box and it is made in a very similar fashion to the way in which the Earl Grey with lavender is made and that it doesn't actually contain jasmine flowers in there. It's the exact same process when your Camellia sinensis leaves in this case are steamed uh, as are a tray of uh, jasmine flowers and so on and so forth and they're still stacked and left to take on that smell. Now this is another really good um, tea to cook with. I actually use this to make jasmine rice at home. So when I'm steaming my rice, I just throw some tea bags in there and that rice takes on that jasmine flavor. So if you are keen fans of sort of, of oriental food, that's a really good tip for you for making at home. Now, we are rapidly running out of time, so I am just gonna leave you with one sort of helpful tip. Now, I do appreciate that when you come to Walt Disney World, you do an incredible amount of walking. Uh, you may return to your um, hotels or homes this evening, take off your shoes and think they just do not smell 
all that great at all. Now, if you pop in a tea bag, and uh, one that contains caffeine, uh, those tea leaves will take on that aroma for you and have your teas smell uh, your teas, your shoes smelling as fresh as the day they did the day you bought them. Uh, please, though, just do me a favour: do not brew those tea bags after they have been in your shoes, because I cannot imagine that that would taste pleasant at all. Now, does anyone have any more questions for us? Yes, not the White teas, yes, yeah. so we, do, we don't have any of white teas featured on this tour. I believe we only have the one white tea inside as well to purchase. Yeah, what, I mean, how's it different? Than the so essentially the biggest difference for a white tea is that as we looked at the start with the Camellia sinensis, it's that they use the bud of the plant, the unopened bud, to make the white tea. Now, I, as far as specifically how it's processed, I, in all honesty, I don't, I don't know. I just know that that's the, the vital ingredient for making that tea, which is why it tastes different to something like your green tea or your black teas, because they're, they're the leaves that are used in order to make that one. It is quite strong though, a white tea. Oh, okay. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Okay. Now, that is going to conclude today's tour. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, we have got some delicious scones across the road for you. We've got a savoury cheese scone that our chef has made a special Earl Grey butter to go with. And then we have um, a sweet scone, which has got your classic sort of um, currants in there for you. And we partnered that one with jam and clotted cream. Um, there also will be a vast variety of teas that we've talked about on the tour for you all to try, so please do help yourselves to that. Um, myself and Natalie will both be over in the Rose and Crown with you, so if you have any more questions for us, feel free to stop us. I hope you have enjoyed the tour today, and that if any of you weren't tea drinkers, I've somehow converted you. Um, although we didn't kick anyone off, so that shouldn't be the case. Um, but yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful day at Epcot and that you enjoy the rest of your stay. Thank you very much Thank for joining you. us. Thank you very much everyone. <laughs> Thank you. So at the end of the tour we have uh, different teas that you can try and we get uh, two types of scones. One's a sweet scone and one is a savory scone. And uh, my first tea is going to be Earl Grey and Lavender just completed the Royal Tea Garden tour and we just had our scones and tea. What did you all think of the tour? I thought it was really fun and enjoyable to go along and I liked the tea at the end so you can actually try the tea that they were talking about. Awesome. Yeah. And our tour guide I thought was amazing. She did a really good job. I learned a, a lot. Yeah, me too. I thought that was great. Was. What was your favorite part of the tour? Probably trying the tea because it was very interesting. Yeah. What was your favorite tea? Probably the um, the holiday spice. I just tried that. That was really good. That was very good. What was your favorite tea? I think it was the Earl Grey uh, lemon because I never tried that before. Oh, I haven't tried good. that. I, I did the Earl Grey lavender. Oh. So we have taken the tea tour, uh, and it was really wonderful, honestly. Uh, our tour guide was fantastic. She did an amazing job, learned a lot about the teas. Now, it's important to understand that they have normal tea tours, which are complimentary, and, and the times are out in front of the tea shop. Uh, it usually starts around 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and those are throughout the whole year. Uh, the Royal Tea Tour uh, is $18. Uh, you need to make reservations. And uh, that happens only during the International Flower and Garden Festival. Uh, they started it last year. I'd like to specifically thank uh, one of my viewers who purchased this for me today to come and view. Um, that individual had done the tour and said that uh, I should put it up. And uh, unfortunately, wish to uh, remain anonymous, but you know who you are, and I wanted to thank you very much. I'm Rachel. And I'm Lisa. And make sure to like and subscribe to the Orlando Wizard. Bye. Bye.